Good evening, and welcome to the Living on the Edge final capstone briefing. My name is Henry Gordon-Smith, and I'll be presenting on behalf of our team. Our faculty advisor is Lynette Witter. This is an image of the urban periphery of Mexico City at night. We call this Living on the Edge, the edge of infrastructure, the edge of the norm. Our project begins with three social entrepreneurs working in Mexico, each working within the urban periphery. So what is living on the edge? The linkages between urban and rural are most intensely demonstrated on the urban periphery. Here, an intermittent flux of people and resources creates communal uncertainty. People living on the edge cannot depend on urban and rural resource flows. This diagram shows what typically happens on the edge. For example, Ileana is a woman that lives far from the urban core of Mexico City in the Ajusco Medio district. Her access to sufficient water services is low. She must spend varying, unpredictable amounts of time and money throughout her life collecting water for use at home. Because water access is so uncertain, Ileana spends sometimes up to 20% of household annual income on the circumstances of the urban periphery. The blue line on this diagram represents the ideal, where everyone living on the edge has equal access to services. While life on the edge can present greater challenges, it can also present greater opportunities, especially for those who are able to draw simultaneously on the comparative advantage of urban and rural areas. The area in green offers an opportunity to leapfrog decentralized sustainable technologies. Our three, our three clients are social entrepreneurs utilizing such technologies. I will now introduce our three clients, their locations, and their technologies. Isla Urbana at the top designs and installs rainwater harvesting systems. They also train other rainwater harvesters. They are growing and have installed over a thousand rainwater catchments already. Sistema Biabosa in the middle designs and installs methane generating biodigesters for rural farmers. They also indirectly provide support through microfinancing. They too are growing rapidly. Yansa is developing a community-owned wind farm in Ixtepec, Oaxaca. This region is known as the second most wind-rich area of the world. The revenue from the farm will go towards community development. They are about to grow. All three clients are poised for success, riding the sustainable development opportunities of the urban periphery. However, they all have barriers that they must first overcome to achieve their respective goals. Each client has multiple barriers preventing them from effectively scaling up and replicating their sustainable solution. We discovered that their biggest barriers could be solved through improved communications. Each client faces challenges in appropriately framing their message. For example, Sistema Biabolsa is struggling to normalize biodigester technology. Isla Urbana is struggling to garner government support for decentralized water infrastructure. And Yansa is struggling to measure the social impacts for a wind farm that has yet to be built. All of our clients' barriers could be circumvented through improvements upon their communication strategies. When we started working with our three, our three clients in January, we had little information about what they wanted or needed from us. As a result, our capstone goal evolved. We concluded that developing dynamic communication strategies for each client was the most impactful way that we could strengthen the sustainable development that our clients are engaged in on the edge. We therefore devised a set of communication strategies to help them leapfrog. Let's take a look at these three strategies. Isla Urbana aspires to make rainwater harvesting an accepted decentralized technology to help supply Mexico City's domestic water needs. Currently, Isla Urbana relies on customer-to-customer -customer endorsement. As you can see from this image, they are doing a good job. Isla Urbana's black rainwater cisterns are scattered across the rooftops of the Ajusco Medio district. However, they are struggling to garner government support from Mexico City. To solve this problem, we have designed a dynamic layered map displaying demographic data and regional infrastructure. It is able to calculate and display data based on queries. For example, how many private homes in Ajusco with connections to the grid lack water four to six months of the year? 
Our mapping tool will allow Isla Urbana to visualize their technology's impact and also calculate areas of highest need for the future. The map facilitates water security, it facilitates sustainable jobs and training, and it saves time and money for the residents of the Jusco Medio. The benefits of the map to our client are that it allows them to quantify the impacts on their focus district. It also allows them to project future water security scenarios and builds a case to stakeholders, including the government, investors, other users. The diagram on the top right shows how our strategies, all of them, utilize both vertical and horizontal communications. You will see this diagram repeated as we go through the strategies. Our second client, Sistema Biobolsa, aspires to normalize their biodigester technology and expand globally. Currently, they rely on word of mouth and demo events. Their biggest communications challenge is convincing new users. This is an image of a, dem a demo event where Sistema Biobolsa is introducing the benefits of the biodigesters to subsistence farmers. You can see the biodigester in the background there, and then the subsistence farmers learning about it. For Sistema Biobolsa, we have designed an integrated communications plan. This is a package of messaging strategies to help them normalize their technology. One such strategy, as you can see highlighted as number five, is a payback tracking game that allows illiterate to semi-literate users and whole families to visualize and track the savings created from a biogas system and to see how long it takes to pay back their system, as well as how much has been saved in terms of other big purchases the farmer routinely, routinely makes. The images at the bottom are the stickers which would be used on the payback tracking system. So you can imagine families and farmers getting involved and measuring their progress before they can buy another cow or another biodigester system. Our integrated communication strategy helps to increase self-reliance. It reduces waste and increases both the revenue and free time of users. The strategy helps Sistema Biobolsa to reach a wider audience and convey impacts through storytelling, like the payback tracking game. Our third client, Yansa, currently uses their website to describe their project. They've held a series of community meetings to gain trust where wind farms have traditionally come with big promise, but little change. Yansa has also conducted some surveys and interviews in the community to begin to understand the areas of most need. We have identified their biggest challenge as effectively communicating the potential impacts of their project that will create positive change in line with the community's self-defined values. We outlined a strategy for Yanza that involves continuously assessing residents' needs, perceptions, and values. This is important because their needs will change over time. The strategy measures relevant impacts over appropriate and varying timelines. Data collection must be collected directly with residents using quantitative, visual, and oral methods. This on-the-ground approach measures the most relevant impacts on to the community. Utilizing multiple metrics allows Yansa to selectively frame the message. Essentially, this is a social value measurement framework. This framework empowers the community to determine what areas of their life are affected by the programs implemented the wind farm is yet to be built. This makes them more resilient and self-reliant, ensuring individuals a success with the community, within the community. Our client benefits from this dynamic framework because it measures impacts over different, different lengths of time, adapts to changing community and varying stakeholder interests, and can be applied to other communities and future projects. This allows Yansa to customize their message for each audience. The strategies that we have designed have cross-client value. They are flexible, replica, replicable, adaptable. For example, a variation of the mapping tool that we designed for Isla Urbana could be used by all of our clients to demonstrate the value of their technology to their stakeholders. Also, we are making all of the strategies publicly accessible online through a Living on the Edge website. This is a screenshot of that website. The Living on the Edge Capstone website allows visitors to explore our clients and our methodology for improving their communications. 
The transparency a website provides facilitates replication. As you can see from this screenshot, visitors can explore both our clients and their respective strategies. We sincerely hope that sharing our strategies online will stimulate others to assist those who are developing the urban periphery throughout the world. Thank you for your time. Please follow us on Twitter at Think Low Tech and stay tuned for the launch of our website. What are your plans? What are you planning to do with the website? And, and you know, what, 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 what is your plan after this? It's a fantastic question. So right now we're in the process of getting approval for use of the logos, et cetera, for the website um, from our clients. Um, so far they've expressed that they are comfortable with that. So the website isn't live yet, but it will be live soon. Um, our goals for the website are, they stem mainly from the fact that as a capstone, we're not finished. You know, we, we've identified the urban periphery as an opportunity for sustainable development of alternative technologies. And so there are some of us, or most of us, that would like to continue to be involved with that. And we see what we've done here as an opportunity to grow, as an opportunity to allow other social entrepreneurs to use the methodology, to use the communication strategies, um, and to improve the urban periphery throughout the world. So with that, um, who will be managing and administrating this website in the future? Well, I'm a web strategist, so the web design was mainly done by Esperanza Garcia, um, who's a very talented graphic and web designer. Uh, the maintenance of it will probably be taken on by myself and whoever on my team is willing to help out. So really interesting presentation. Um, do you have other areas um, that, or are there urban areas or peripheries that you're already looking at to maybe, um, you know, explore this more? You know, we have we don't have other specific geographic, urban periphery areas that we've identified yet um, that we want to move into. We're still finishing our capstone, <laughs> but. Um, I, I will say one thing. A, a few weeks ago, we had a workshop with the Rhode Island School of Design. We didn't have time to present it. Um, but what we did with them is we imagined what would be the ideal, as identified on that first diagram. Um, so we imagined, you know, what would be the best interventions that would be made in the Ixtepec, that's where Yansa is functioning, um, region, which is really, you know, subsistence farming, and it, it, really, def it really is the case study of the model urban periphery in many ways. And so we explored, you know, visually and, and through discussion through Friday and Saturday a few weeks ago, um, what that might be like. And, you know, there are, there are challenges in the urban periphery and solutions which can be replicated in other areas. So no, we don't have a specific geographic location, but our mind is there. <laughs> 